I made a few videos on this channel before about some fun little things you can do in Python, some intentional, some not. Considering that Easter is just around the corner, I thought I would compile some of my favorite Easter eggs in Python and show them to you today just as a little bit of fun. Because what's the point in taking things seriously if you can't have a little bit of fun sometimes? Of course, if you like this video at any point, then consider like it to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, you can become either a patron or a member by using the information in the description below. With all that out of the way, let's look at some cool little Easter eggs in Python. The first Easter egg I want to show you is the one that everyone and their mother knows. So if you open the Python interpreter, we do import this and we get this fancy thing back. So we get the the Zen of Python by Tim Peters written all the way back in maybe 2000 or something. So it's very old. Um, I'm sure everyone has read this before. Uh, one thing you perhaps didn't know is that it's there's actually a very weird way in which import this works. So if I load up the source code, you can see that it is just an absolute mess. There is nothing you can get from this, but it is rot13 encoded. And when you actually run this, it creates a dictionary. It iterates through all the ASCII characters between A to Z. It then runs through all the alphabets as well. And then it converts um, essentially the ROT13 encoded. Well, it's essentially um, a decryption algorithm. From there, you get this join, uh, which adds everything back up again. And then it's printed to the terminal. So you may have known about import this, but you might not have known that it's ROT13 encoded. And that really caught a lot of people out when I made that community qu um, quiz question about it. <laughs> Sorry about that. The next Easter egg on the list is also an import trick. So you could do import anti-gravity and hope it opens in the right Firefox window, which it didn't. Of course it didn't. If I can bring this over. Oop -a -doop -a -doo. <laughs> Uh, we can see that we uh, are loaded into this Python cartoon that was written. Uh, I don't know if anyone does know. Let me know. I tried to figure it out, and I I really I really don't know when it was written. But it is a a cartoon. So you're flying? How Python? I've learned it last night. Everything is so simple. Hello world is just print. Hello world. It's at least in the Python two days. I don't know. Dynamic typing. White space. Come join us. Programming is fun again. A whole new world up here. But how are you flying? I just typed import anti-gravity. That's it. I also sampled everything in the medicine cabinet for comparison. But I think this is the Python. Um, so yeah, that's where that comes from. So I suppose this cartoon came along and then Python actually implemented uh, import anti-gravity, which is pretty cool. I've also just realized before this one that we don't actually leave the terminal for the entire video. So I've decided to make the whole frame a very pretty terminal. But our third one is something I've actually talked about on the video before. It was an April Fool's joke in 2009. Oh, I really set myself up to be corrected now. But it is the diamond operator in Python. So if we import, uh, oh, sorry, from uh, Dunder Future, import Barry as fluffle exactly like that then we've activated something in the code that means that one does not equal two will no longer work uh, with barry as the bdfl use um, this operator instead of exclamation mark equals so if we do it here then it works uh, we get uh, that one does not equal true unfortunately this does not work in actual scripts as I said, it was an April Fool's joke. So it's this one here, PEP401. And as you can see, I was right, April the 1st, 2009. Uh, and basically the idea uh, behind it was that Barry Warsaw uh, preferred the diamond operator to the exclamation mark equals operator. And there was actually a diamond operator in use before Python 1. So I did some videos on Python 1 and that had the exclamation mark equals. Python 0.9 used the diamond operator for inequalities and Barry Warsaw wanted to keep that was you know, ferociously outvoted uh, and as such uh, this uh, you know this pep was created as a nice little April Fool's joke uh, you can see yeah reinstates the diamond operator as the sole spelling so there you go the Python team didn't stop there with the from future tricks though as our fourth Easter egg takes us somewhere else with it so if we do from future import braces 
this was designed before I run this. This was designed um, to essentially be an answer to everyone that wanted braces in Python. So anyone that asked, you know, do you want braces or can you implement braces? Not a chance. The fifth Easter egg on the list actually only activates in Python 3.9. So if I do pyenv activate, uh, I forget what I called this now, CBR Easter. There you go. Oh, it's not going to be able to find it. Stop. Fine. I'm trying to find it. There we go. So you can see we're on 3.9.18. If I go in now and I just type peg parser, you get a syntax error saying you found it. And the idea with this is that the old LL1 parser that was used from Python 3.8 and below was replaced with the peg parser in Python 3.9. And that's since allowed some really cool things like um, 3.12's f-string uh, changes, where you can have infinite nesting within f-strings. That would not have been possible under the old LL1 parser. So this was kind of, you know, a little celebration that the peg parser was in. And it was a lot better. I think it was a lot faster as well. If you want to know more about the peg parser, you can look at PEP 617, which goes into more detail about, you know, the old LL1 parser and, you know, the differences between the two. You can also go to this full grammar specification. I'll zoom this in a bit. If you want to know more about the grammar of how the peg parser is implemented and what you need to do if you ever wanted to make any con uh, contributions to anything that used it, which... Now that I think about it, is everything. <laughs> Back in Python 3.12, our sixth and penultimate Easter egg is a different type of import, a sort of a hidden import that probably not many people know about. So if you wanted, you could do import uh, hello. And on previous versions of Python, actually, I can probably boot up the uh, uh, the the 3.9 one again. And if we do import hello uh, here. We actually get hello world. So on 3.11, I'll put that as text in the video, and above, this isn't possible, but 3.10 and below, I believe, uh, you could actually write a hello program or hello world program, sorry, just by importing Dunder hello. And you would get all the points in your first programming class if you did this. Of course, on newer versions of Python, this has been taken out. The reason for this is a little bit unclear. But if we import Dunder Hello here, we still have um, Dunder Hello uh, dot main, which may actually get you even more brownie points depending on who your you know, who your teacher is. If you wanted to be really special, then you can use the p hello uh, package instead, which contains you know in it you know our hello world, but it also contains oh I've refreshed it now. It also contains our spam, which does exactly the same thing. It also contains this ham submodule with this in it which is empty, and this eggs file, which is also empty. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but it is there, and I am counting it as an Easter egg. Our final Easter egg of the day can be found in the Python documentation. In fact, it can be found in many places indeed, and it is all the Monty Python references in the documentation. So for those of you that don't know, Python was not named after the snake. It was actually named after the Monty Python TV show and film series that ran between, I don't know, the 60s or the 70s or something, all the way up to the 90s, and I think the latest thing was in 2014. So it's been around a good while. Um, it is a cultural hit, you know, everyone knows about Monty Python, uh, especially the the, uh, the creator of Python. And as such, um, contributions to the documentation or examples to the documentation uh, that reference uh, Monty Python are not only allowed but are actively encouraged and you can find all these by just typing in spam in here and you can see you know foo spam value spam set spam if we did eggs you know this is all based on their um there's a sketch called spam i i'm gonna be honest i haven't watched monty python i really should i know people are gonna kill me for saying that I, I really should watch monty python at some point so i actually understand some of this stuff but there's eggs and there's ham uh, apparently, the wheel, there was a sketch about a wheel, and that's why Python wheel files are named as they are. But you'll be able to find all sorts of things. So if you looked up knights as well is, a, is another one. So you have the knights of Nye is all in here. It's Brian from Life of Brian in here. Oh, there we go. Oh, Monty Python's Life of Brian. Oh, that is Monty. Oh, yeah, 1979. There we go. So Brian. Oh, it's just people called Brian. Okay, fine. Although, actually, I say that. I think this example is using... Uh, the life of Brian 
Yeah, there we go. It's, it's actually using Monty Python films as database records. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Easter egg was. Which ones did you know already? Which ones didn't you? For all those that celebrate Easter, happy Easter. I hope you have a good time. For all those that don't celebrate Easter, I hope you have a good few days anyway, because everyone deserves to have a good day every day. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my amazing members and patrons on screen now, especially Mazar Roshiman III for being so generous. If you've always wanted to create an API and only have 20 minutes to do so, then go check out Monday's video because I showed you how to do exactly that in Fast API. And I'll see you in the next video where we do whatever we do next.